and welcome to Bar Charts. Uh, just before we start, a reminder that there is a nose chart to reveal for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you'll be able to work along with me as we go through the video. And so we're going to begin with a bar chart which shows some information about the number of letters in each word in a paragraph. Um, now before we get into the actual question, I just wanted to take a look at the uh, diagram and just show some of the features of a bar chart which are really, really important. Um, the first one is the bars themselves. If you notice here, all of the bars are exactly the same width. That is very, very important. We, uh, we should have the same width of every single bar. And then also you will notice that there is a gap of equal distance in between each bar. That is also very, very important. As we look up the side, um, all of the um, values up the side are evenly spaced and placed on the uh, on the lines, not in the squares, on the lines. So zero is the bottom line, five is this line, 10 is this line, 15 this line. And you will also notice that there are labels on either side. We have number of words on the Y axis going up and number of letters on the x-axis going across. Um, that is very important. We should always label to say what our categories are actually um, showing. Um, now, the word uh, here says number of words. Where it says number of words, occasionally that will be replaced with frequency. Um, and that is because uh, frequency is just a word for how many times something has happened. Um, so, leave, uh, moving away from the bar chart itself um, to the questions. What is the modal number of letters in a word? So the word modal goes along with mode, and mode means most common. So what is the most common number of letters in a word? Well, what we need to be looking at here is which of the uh, bars in our bar chart is the tallest. Well, if we have a look, it's quite clearly this bar, which is the tallest of all of them, and that is for three letters. And so three letters is the modal number of letters. It asks us to work out the range for the numbers of letters in a word. Well, if we have a look at the, um, at the, at the table, the range would be the biggest take away the smallest. But that is the largest number of letters, which in this case is 10 letters, take away the smallest number of letters, which is one. And so we'd have 10 take away one equals nine letters. It also asks us to work out the fraction of the words that have at least six letters. Now, if we're going to do that, what we're going to need to know is how many have at least six letters. So what we need to do here is read the actual height of the bars. So for six letters, there are three words. For seven letters, there are four words. For eight letters, there are five words. For nine letters, there are two words, and for ten letters, there is one. And so, um, the number of words which have at least six letters would be three plus four plus five plus two plus one. So seven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen letters. But out of how many? Well, we would also need to know how many there are in total. So, there were five there. There are eight here, there are 12 here, 10 here, and 9 here. So now we just need to add all of the numbers together. So 5 plus 8 is 13, plus 12 is 25, plus 10 is 35, plus 9 is 44, and the 15 that we had here, so that's 59. And 15 out of 59 is our final answer. And so next we're going to look at what is known as a comparative bar chart. It is where we compare two different groups together but for the same set of data. And so in this case we're comparing children and adults and the scores that they gave to an app. And so we've had to colour the bars in different colours so we know which one is which. So the children are shown with this cross hatch and the adults are coloured in in full. But you'll notice in terms of the way it's laid out we still have our little gaps in between the bars but this time it's gaps in between pairs of bars um, so that we can separate out the scores from each other um, and on the right hand side it says frequency frequency there just a word for how many times it happened so how many people are we talking about 
and what we've been asked to do here is complete the bar chart for the information. So just straight away, we're told that for a score of four, there were 14 children. And therefore, I need to leave a gap, but then draw a bar, which will go up to the height of 14, and draw across, and then draw down. Now, in order to show that this is children, I'm going to have to do the cross hatch just to show that uh, which group we are talking about. And then for the number of adults, well, the number of adults was six. So all I need to do is go to six and to draw a line going across and draw a line going down. And this time, just colour that in in full to show that that was the adults. Then for a score of five, we are told that 10 children gave it a score of five. We need to leave a gap again and we need to draw a line up to a height of 10. And again, cross hatch just to show that that is the children. And then the number of adults was nine. Now, in this case, we've got to be very careful because the squares that we've been used are using to show two at a time. And so nine is actually halfway between the line for eight and the line for nine. And so we're going to have to draw a little line going across that's halfway between the square. Draw it down, and because that is adults, colour it in in full. Now, we've drawn uh, the information, but what it asks for is the total number of adults who gave the app a score. So what we're going to have to do now is use uh, the scales to read off how many adults we were dealing with. Now, key point there, it's only adults, so we're only looking at the ones that are fully coloured in. And so this first one is 12 adults. The second one is 10. The next one is halfway between 10 and 12, so that is 11 adults. And then six adults, and finally nine adults. And so we'll just add all of those together. So 12 plus 10 plus 11 plus six plus nine. Well, that is 22, 33, 39. It is 48 in total. And so we're going to end with an exam question. And this came from the LXL paper in June 2018, and it was foundation paper one. Um, now, before we get going, I just want to point out that this is another type of uh, bar chart. It's what's known as a composite bar chart. It's where bars are actually uh, stacked on top of each other um, for different categories. So this one is telling us that a shop sells desktop computers, laptops, and tablets. The composite bar chart shows information about sales over the last three years. So the dark black parts are desktop computers, the cross-hatched parts are laptops, and the grey parts are tablets. So it asks us to write down the number of desktop computers sold in 2015. So we're only dealing with um, the first bar, and we're looking for the number of desktop computers. So that are, uh, those are the ones in black. And so for that, all I need to do is go to the top of the bar and read how many that is. So the number of desktop computers, well, that was 100. If we continue, it wants to work out the total number of laptops sold in the three years. Now, the laptops are a little bit more complicated because in order to find out how many laptops it is per year, I need to actually know what the uh, lowest value and the highest value represents. And so in this case, We've got from 100 up to, and if we just check what each of these uh, little blocks is worth, that is five blocks covering 100, so it's 20 each, so that is 260. And so from 100 to 260 are the laptops, which means 160 laptops. In the uh, 2016, well, this value here is 120, and this value at the top is 340. So the difference between 340 and 120, that means it was 220 laptops sold in 2016. And then finally, in 2017, well, this bottom value is 160. The top value is 440. And so the number of uh, laptops in 2017, well, that's 440, take away 160, 
and so that is 280 laptops in 2017 but it wanted the total for the three years and so 280 220 and 160 all need adding together and if we do that we get 8 plus 2 plus 6 is 16 so 1 3 5 6 we had 660 laptops sold in the three years and we're then asked to state the item that had the greatest increase in sales over the three years giving a uh, giving a reason for your answer well what that means is from the start to the end which one has increased by the most now um there are ways of doing this we could uh, read every single value and work out exactly every value but actually enough information here is just to show visually what we are talking about if we look at the tablets we can quite clearly see that the tablets have increased more than any other value um, there's only been a small increase for the laptops and we already know it went from 160 to 220 to 280 but if we look at the laptops we can clearly see there were only 60 or so in the first year and by the second year we're looking at nearly 400 and so that is a huge increase in number and so all you could say here is um, it is tablets because the bar has gotten much bigger uh, than the others the last point though is the really important one because this is a little bit of interpretation that is required Alex says in 2017 more tablets were sold than desktop computers this means the shop makes more profit from the sale of tablets than from the sale of desktop computers is Alex correct you must justify your answer well the first thing here is um, in 2017 more tablets were sold than desktop computers well let's have a look were more uh, more tablets sold than desktop computers well the tablets is this piece desktop computers is this piece so that is definitely correct he is not wrong in that situation they definitely sold more tablets than they did desktop computers but the point of the question is that he says they make more profit from the sale of tablets than the sale of desktop computers now profit does not mean income um, profit is the increase you get on top of what you paid for something when you sell it now just because you sell more tablets does not mean you are getting more profit we do not know anything about the actual costs of tablets or desktop computers and so um, he says they must make more uh, more profit but is he uh, is he correct no and the reason we don't know about cost if we don't know any information about how much things cost in the first place or how much he's selling them for we cannot calculate profit